Hey everyone. So I just want to have a little conversation about like, what should you memorize as you're learning how to code? Um, I remember reading some stuff on like Twitter and social media that like a lot of people are like saying that senior developers look stuff up all the time. Um, and they kind of downplay having to memorize stuff and actually like know stuff. And I don't think that's truly the case. I think there's some things that you need to memorize. There's some things that you have to have memorized to be able to be an efficient coder and not get caught up on the small thing. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I do web development. Uh, more specifically, I do like full stack node and JavaScript. So if your stack is node, let's just do my example. If, if you're using JavaScript and you want to become really good at JavaScript, it would make sense that you need to memorize some of the core things in JavaScript, right? So for an example, if I were to come up to you and say, hey, you have an array of three numbers. So A, one, two, three, okay? First of all, if I told you to declare an array that had one, two, three in it, it should take you 10 seconds or less to do that. You shouldn't have to go and look that up. That should be muscle memory. You know how the const keyword works. You know how to declare a variable. You know how to declare an array. I guess this is called like an, an array literal. And you know how to put elements in it. Or if I say, you know, give me the, the last index of the array, right? Well, you should be able to do a dot, um, a dot length minus one, right? That gives you the last element of the array, right? So there's things that you need to have memorized. Um, I'll keep giving you some more examples, right? So if you need to, if I were to come up to you, let's say you're, we're pair programming on a problem at work, and I say, okay, I need you to loop over all the numbers and add one to them. You should have in your mind like different approaches that you could do this. You could do a for loop. So you should be able to type out a for loop like that. And it shouldn't take you too much time to figure that out. And you know, you don't need to go and look up, is it in here or is it of? You should have that memorized. Of is for object, uh, arrays, in is for objects, if you need the keys in objects. So you shouldn't have to like look that up. And then you should also know the different approaches. Like if I say a dot for each, I understand that this is a function that gets called for every number in this array. Again, muscle memory, this should be memorized. And then the original problem, add one to all these, right? So what we could do is do cons b equals a dot map, and then just do this, like add one. And then again, Copilot kind of built that out for me. But the point I'm making is that if you're JavaScript, if you're a JavaScript developer and JavaScript is your main language, you shouldn't have to look this stuff up. This stuff should be memorized. You should know how to implement it. You should know when you should use it. And if you don't actually know all this and you don't have this memorized and you can't type up some of these things in less than like 10, 20 seconds when I ask you to loop over an array and add one to all the numbers, you should not be doing React development. You should not be progressing further into more difficult things. You should know how to actually use JavaScript and use it pretty well. Again, this is just my advice. Um, now, the, again, the, the reason I'm saying this is this is like the building blocks. This is like the lowest level stuff that you can do in your language of choice. And you don't want to be wasting time doing this because this is like trivial stuff, in my opinion. You need to be spending more time. in like, OK, how do I properly modulize my React application? How do I make React components that aren't really coupled to particular details of my business or whatever? Those are the things you want to get to when you become a more mid or senior level developer. This, is, this isn't the stuff that you care about. This stuff is like muscle memory. You shouldn't care about this stuff. And for my example, if, if I'm a senior developer and I get put into a new role where I have to learn a new language, I personally would probably spend a couple of weeks just trying to master the syntax of that language, trying to master all the helper functions of that language, go through the documentation. Like, I, I don't know if you've read through the MDM docs, but there's a lot of different methods you can do on arrays, like filtering. If I say, give me all the odd numbers in an array, that should take you 10 seconds to type up a filter, right? I should say const C is equal to a dot filter, and I want to do the number, and I want to say number uh, mod, where's the percentage? Mod two, okay? That gives me all the numbers that are even. Or maybe that will, that will. So. Like I'm saying, like you shouldn't get caught up in doing some of these lower level functions that are built into your library or framework of choice. 
If you're a Python developer, there should be a bunch of standard libraries that you need to have memorized. Um, and I know there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff to memorize. But let's say you don't have the capacity to like memorize all of them. At the very least, know that there's what they do. Know like that they exist. Because um, like for JavaScript, you have array methods, you have string methods, you have object methods, you have branching logic, you have the ability to loop through these arrays, the ability to get all the keys from an object. It's like all this lower level stuff that if you don't actually master it, then moving on to something like React or Redux or React Query, where you're doing a lot of asynchronous code, you have callbacks, you have like spread operators, rest operators, you're just going to be lost because you didn't really get a good grasp on the fundamentals of the lower level language that you're using to implement these higher level tools. Um, and there are some things that, I mean, even senior developers look up all the time. The, me, I, I Google a lot, but it's the things I'm Googling aren't these lower level things, right? For example, in React, I'm not Googling how to use the use effect hook. These are things that I have memorized. If you go to the hooks, which is here, let's just look at the hooks for example using state if you want to call yourself a react developer and someone says i need you to store the number five in a react component state it should take you five seconds to basically type this line out you should understand the use state hook you should understand how to store a default value in it you should understand what this thing actually returns sorry it might be really really small to read um, you should understand this returns an array of two elements you should understand what this is. This is array destructuring where you take index zero and put it to an, a variable and index one and put that to a variable. So this shouldn't be foreign to you. If this, if this doesn't make sense, then stop using React. Go back, learn JavaScript, and learn it well because this is just building upon JavaScript. In fact, React builds upon JavaScript like in all these different places. Like this is an anonymous callback function, which is calling a function over here which is doing some stuff behind the scenes to update count on the next React render, right? So it just gets more complicated. And if you're kind of stuck on some of these things, it's just not going to be good for you. Same with like use effect, like memorize what is use effect? What is it used for? Well, it's used for when components mount and unmount, but it's also used for watching when other state variables change. So you can kind of like chain, have like a chain reaction in your code or an effect when something in your, you know, state changes. And understand that this takes a callback function. The callback function can return a callback function, and it can also take a extra array dependencies right here. Um, what happens if you don't put that array? Well, this thing runs every re-render. How does re-rendering work in React? I don't know. You got to go read it. There's docs. They explain that. So just make sure that as a beginner, just take it slow. Make flashcards if you need to. Type this stuff out over and over again. Like, there's nothing wrong with, like, getting good at typing out map like a dot filter right if i do like one two three there's nothing wrong with spending 30 minutes doing like a dot filter number number mod two okay like no joke i'm not even kidding right now like get good at practicing typing this over and over again at least 10 20 times because you don't want to you don't want to waste time like doing this stuff this is like the lower level stuff that you should know um and right now i depend on copilot a lot so like i'm not really as good as typing this stuff out but this should become muscle memory where if you need to do something simple like a filter like you don't waste time typing it out and a good rule of thumb i'm gonna wrap this up soon but a good rule of thumb is memorize the things that you use either every day when you're coding but if you don't code that much like for example i work full-time eight hours a day so there's a lot of things that i'm doing over and over again at work so if i do them more than one time in a day i'm going to memorize that if you can only allocate like two hours a day to code or like one hour a day to code then memorize the things that you see happening multiple times a week if you find yourself writing a for loop more than one time a week, you better memorize how to write a for loop. Memorize the syntax. Memorize what a for keyword is. Memorize the parentheses, the brackets. You shouldn't be getting caught up on this lower level syntax stuff because this stuff is trivial and you just need to spend time making sure that you have the muscle memory to execute it with your fingers to type it into the keyboard. Um, yeah, and then so as far as like some of these docs are huge, 
Um, as a beginner, like I wouldn't recommend reading through all these. It, it would help. It definitely will help if you read through some of these docs and just understood like what does React actually provide us? What other hooks does React have? There's some hooks that I really haven't used. Um, kind of related to like the rendering hook or something. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, it's just good to know that there are stuff that's th there is stuff that's there and what they kind of do behind the scenes. You don't necessarily need to know the implementation details of these other things that you don't use every day, but it's nice to know that they exist and how you could potentially use them in the future if you need to. For example, like the JavaScript pro proxy object, you're probably never going to use JavaScript's proxy object. Okay, but it's nice to know what it does. It's nice to know that you can pass it an object and whenever this object changes, you can call a function, right? So if I have like a variable here and I say a dot name is equal to Bob, I can actually have this assignment call something in this proxy. And this is an example. I don't have this memorized because I don't do this every day. There's maybe one or two times a year I've used the proxy. Um, and, but it's nice to know that it's there and it's nice to know like what is its purpose? So, I don't know, if you enjoyed my rant, uh, let me know. Have a good day and happy coding.